Stop and smell the roses. A common quote that holds true for our guest artist Vanessa. But instead of roses, she rediscovered her home country when she took the time to stop and sketch. Listen as we take a tour around Hong Kong through an artist's lens, why urban sketching can be intoxicating, how to break away from rigid drawings and shapes, navigate through the pandemic by sketching random things from your home, how to rediscover your hometown and fall in love with drawing. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etrolab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I, I really love drawing a lot. Uh, when I was young and I, I think I I can't read a lot of books I just like books with pictures okay. and things like that and so <laughs> I think the reason I study architecture is because I really want to draw mm -hmm. um, but eventually when you study architecture and when you get out to the real world to work you don't really have much chance to draw again so uh, it, it, it's like after graduating from university when I start working uh, I have actually put down you know drawings sketching or whatever arts and crafts activities um, so have been just concentrating on my work so I think back in 2015 uh, one of my friends who's actually uh, an urban sketcher uh, he keeps on telling me that you should join the urban sketches group, you should come out to draw. And I said, no, I cannot draw, I cannot draw because I've put down drawings for so long. So I said, I cannot, I really cannot. And eventually, um, because he keeps on persuading me. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so I think, okay, I will give it a try. Mm -hmm. I will just give it a try for once. And mm -hmm. then I remember that activity as a, a classic car show in Hong Kong and so um, I I went there but I was so you know so scared because I haven't picked up my pen and paper and, and watercolors for so long so I was like hiding between two cars <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that <laughs> I, I can kind of like you know hiding away people can see me I, I would draw it and yeah. then um, after that first time joining the urban sketches um, activities um, I actually did two sketches uh, that time and and then uh, I found it really fun because after that we we, we have that uh, show and tell so every mm -hmm. artist uh, I, I mean well urban sketches just gather together and then we show all our sketches and that makes me feel a lot of fun because I can see different styles, different yeah. people drawing different cars, and then, uh, and and then, the thing is that I don't think that I'm that bad. <laughs> it's like I can okay. still draw again. So it's it's really um it's really uh, weird that after the first sketching event, uh, I kind of you know get um you know um um get just stuck to the and I I, I was like uh, bringing my sketchbook and my sketching tools around all the time and yeah. trying to find things to draw it, it's just like um, uh, being toxinated you know <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I cannot you know I cannot um, give up the thought of not sketching, not sketching. It's kind of so um, since then actually this habit have lasted me for six years and I feel that it can be my you know lifetime um, hobbies and activities that I, I won't give up because actually it's so nice that you can draw anywhere and mm -hmm. and you know people were like always looking at their phones uh playing with their phones all the time yeah. and since then i feel that whenever i have free time whenever my friends are late i have to wait i have to wait for the bus or whatever i i don't mind at all because uh, i will just bring out my sketchbook and and sketch and do some sketching so um 
I think that's it. That's how I get to know urban sketching. And that's mm -hmm. how I, you know, started my sketching journals. Um, and that's why I, and I, I have been keeping my sketchbooks, like a pile of them. And these are like my, 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 yeah. my precious and, and I can just read through them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really funny sometimes um, when you go through them, you can go through um, your past sketches, like you can't remember what happened like five years ago today. So I just go through my sketchbooks and, and check, oh, actually I went to here, I have food here. Um, it's like a journal. It's like something that keeps reminding you of a lot of good memories. <laughs> I agree. And thank you for sharing that bit, uh, Vanessa. I saw in one of your videos, I think it's a short clip, when you were piling all of your journals, yeah. like, wow, she has a ton of sketchbooks. And you did mention that you started doing it in 2015. So how long was it from the time that you knew you loved drawing as a kid, right? But then come college, you studied architecture, and then you said you had to stop drawing, even though you loved it so much. So how long was that? before you, your friend wow. <laughs> asked you or like prompted you again to draw in that car show? Mm, 15, 20 years. How? It's a long time. It's That's a long, a long time. time. <laughs> yeah. That is a really long time. And funny though, when you said it, I, you were having some doubts when you were in that car show because you, you were thinking that maybe I'm you know, not that good anymore because that was really like, really long time of not yeah. drawing so you really didn't draw the entire 15 years that gap mm, I, well the things I draw is actually for work for work and you right. know um when you work nowadays you use computer to do the drawings That's true. and That's true. and actually being yeah. an architect you usually just draw straight lines straight very lines. rigid <laughs> so, yeah and yeah. and and well, I must say it's it's not that colorful. <laughs> you, you see, my drawings are very colorful. Yes, and I I, I think um from the beginning I I also dare not to use a lot of colors. Hmm. But then this have changed over the years, which I think colors really help. And I think uh, that's something I I learn. And uh, well, I think colors make things more vibrant, more mm -hmm. happy. So yeah. so I think for the work part, all I did is, well, I can't say it's boring, but but you know, it's the shape and the very rigidity of buildings, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. curtain walls, yeah. those new buildings. Mm -hmm. um, so not much color there. So actually, I think I, I would like to find something else from apart from work that could bring in more colors, more fun. <laughs> I do agree. And looking at your works from the ground, it's just a, a myriad of colors and different subjects. And what's interesting as well is that you live in Hong Kong. It's a very vibrant city, country. Oh, it has a mix, a good mix of old and you know contemporary, so much history. And I've been to Hong Kong several times and I love the energy and the vibe of the city. Everywhere you look, there's just something to see. So would you say that that, be, living in Hong Kong, you were born and raised in Hong Kong. I, Yes, yes. Read, yeah. Would you say that living in Hong Kong has contributed to this your style of painting or at least the subjects that you have chosen and selected to paint? Um, yes, actually, I agree with you. And and actually, uh, it's also the other way around that uh, when I, after starting to do urban sketching, mm -hmm. I think I discovered also more about Hong Kong. Okay. Although I've been living in Hong Kong for so long, yeah. but there are a lot of areas I haven't really, even if I went to before, I, I didn't really take note of the place the much. Place. Um, yeah. And then uh, I think urban sketching brings me to a lot of different parts of Hong Kong. And then because I need to stay there for like an hour or two to mm. sketch, you got to know, firstly, when you see that place and when you start sketching, you got to notice a lot of details of that area that when you just 
pass by you you might mm. miss it so sure. that's one thing that's very interesting that i i love it because uh, that's that uh, urban sketching actually helps me to understand more or, or see more of of my of my hometown <laughs> and then and the next thing is that when you stay there for a, an hour or two uh, there, there are usually a lot of people pass by, yeah. and those locals, those people that are living in that district, sometimes will start talking to you and telling you about, oh, I have this building, I know it, it's, uh, it's been here for 50 years, or sometimes you hear them um, talking about something else, so you could also feel the environment of different districts in Hong Kong, so it's, it's kind of an experience uh, as an experience more than just drawing so that's something i like as well instead of looking at the picture from hong kong and and copying it drawing it i really enjoy you know sitting right on the street mm -hmm. <laughs> to draw it because you notice a lot of things you hear from the locals you learn from the locals and and so you know that place much more than you just pass by um, and so I, I think um, both in a way that Hong Kong is actually a place where it helps me to do my urban sketching but it's also urban sketching that helps me understand and notice this place more. <laughs> That's very well put. Uh, I've, I've interviewed several artists on the pod and mostly are urban sketchers. And what I love about those interviews is that they tell a story through when, when they, whenever they go to a place and they stop for a while and then spend like an hour or two in a certain place. And it's more than just that place. Like what you said, it's an experience meeting people, hearing yeah. the story of that place. And yeah. with Hong Kong, it's very rich. And I would assume it's very, not assume, but in fact, it's very rich in history. And what I like about Hong Kong as well is that you can go somewhere and you have nature. You can go in the middle of Hong Kong and it's like the vibrant city. So there are like different layers of experiences that you can have within Hong Kong. So going back quickly to the uh, do your your selection of subjects. So I know with your background in architecture, of course, it's, it's sort of expected that you will very much inclined to drawing buildings and you know um, a landscape. But what would you say would be if you are to be to pick three, let's say within Hong Kong from the time that you started doing urban sketching again in 2015? Can you name like your top three when you sit there and then you fell in love with what you're sketching and more than that you really immerse into that experience if you can give like top three um top three you mean three locations in hong kong let's say location yeah yeah well the first one i can think of is is uh, definitely uh Sham Shui po. Mm -hmm. um some show po is um a district which is um i i would say that is 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 a bit um um if you search on Google, it's like a more poor district, and but then uh, they got those street markets, and they got a a lot of things happening there, mm -hmm. and they there are people selling all those old phones, old electronics, okay. and a lot of people will go there to to find. Uh, cheap things to buy cheap things mm -hmm. or, or secondhand things yeah. and and um and i remember why i am so um i have so i, I can remember that place so much because i was sitting there sketching one of those old buildings there uh and and actually the marketplace uh, the, the street market is actually around me so mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, people passing by and those people some are locals or some are just come in to mm -hmm. to find the find find some cheap things cheap phones and things like that and then but they were like they saw me and they were like circling me <laughs> and and they were uh chit chatting yeah. and um uh, the, the funny thing is that they they don't really they they are not aware that 
I'm actually drawing an old building. They were like circling me in front of me, looking at my <laughs> sketchbook, looking at me okay. drawing. And actually, I had to peep through their legs <laughs> to, see, <laughs> to the see my subject. <laughs> and they, they, they were, and they were not talking to me. They were like talking to each other, as if I am, as if I am, some kind of exhibit. Okay. In front of them, yeah, yeah. and they were like criticizing what I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like they, they ignore whether I understand them or not. Yeah. And they were like criticizing one. And obviously, they were not friends at all. They don't know each other, those mm -hmm. people. But just that they were like um, uh, chit chatting. And some said, that, uh, one of them said, Oh, hey, the way she draws, I know that uh, she's only learning. She's just a beginner. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then the next guy was said, no, I don't think so. I think she's really good. So, so they were like, they were like, really each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and I think that's really fun because uh, I could feel that in different districts of Hong Kong, um, the people will react differently. Uh, like in, say, in Central, a more, um, a, a more cultural district, a district which is, uh, uh, which is more uh, a working uh, yeah. a CBD district, mm -hmm. people will tend not to talk or, or just say, oh, that's nice. And then they will walk past you. So, but some show pole is a district which I enjoy so much. I don't mind them, you know, criticizing okay. my drawing because yeah. the thing is that I find it so funny. Mm -hmm. I keep on, you know, laughing, smiling, and then I keep on drawing and, yeah. and I think, oh, that's, that's good. So that's um, one of the experience which I remember very clearly and then I think the next place I love to draw is uh, Central as I just mentioned but not the uh, CBD area of Central not the, the tall buildings the, the buildings yeah. with the banks and things um, because Central actually got a lot of uh, small streets and and also got a lot of history and I remembered I I enjoyed drawing, um, which I have drawn that place for several times. It's a small place um, uh, cafe. Um, it's a Chinese, what, what we call it, Ta Tan Tan. Mm -hmm. It's a Chinese type of tea room, um, Hong Kong style tea room uh, called uh, Lan Fong Yun. Lan Fong Yun. Okay. And so it's, it's actually uh, a small green green hut, I would say, by the street side. So uh, there's a long history with this uh, place. Uh, I think it's, it's over 60 years old because back then in Hong Kong, people can actually put up their small hut on, on the street side and sell uh, tea, milk tea and, and, and sandwiches, things like that. But because of the hygiene problem, um, I think somehow uh, along the way, Hong Kong government wouldn't allow people to do that anymore. And um, all these street, all these food selling places have to be inside a shop. Okay. But this place, like Fong Yun, um, they still got the license because uh, they have been, uh, there's no new license issued from the Hong Kong government, but okay. they still got their own license as of now mm -hmm. and so there's not much of these place left in Hong Kong and this is one of the place in um, in central that I like doing and and because the, the shop owner is so nice I was like sketching outside and then they they actually give me a chair to sit and they serve me with milk tea oh, <laughs> yeah so I um, I must say that sketching outdoors is the fun is that you got to meet people and you can find that actually people around us so nice if you you sometimes when you visit hong kong maybe you find that people hong kong people are rude they won't say hello they will just pass by because everybody's so busy and walking so fast yeah. but once you sit down once you do things like this um you will be amazed that actually Hong Kong people are quite friendly. <laughs> Make More Art the Podcast is made possible by listeners like you. So we would like to give a shout out to Sandra D. Onofrio from YouTube. She said, 
Renata is a realist, so refreshing to hear from a successful artist. Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. <laughs> okay. okay, I got two plays. Let me think the third one. The third one I would say um, is uh, Lei Yu Moon. It's actually, this is quite not, not, not a very urban place. It's, it's a place by the sea. It's a fishing port. Okay. So I think it's something different from what mm -hmm. I mentioned before. The, yeah. Those are the two places. So um, they got the fishing boats and, and they got the um, a seafront. So uh, uh, it's a it's a very quiet place that you can you know sit down for, in an afternoon to, mm -hmm. to sketch the, the fishing boats and and the water and things like that. So that's another place that I enjoy to sketch in Hong Kong. Actually, it could be a lot of places. You know, I know. I've been looking at, uh, looking at your Instagram. It feels like I'm traveling around Hong Kong, and which kind of makes me miss traveling because of the pandemic. But oh, yes, yes. Speaking of the pandemic, with you, with someone who, and I, I ask this all the time with some of the urban sketchers who love to travel and sketch. Now that most, I mean, I know for Hong Kong, it's, much better compared to the other places. I'm not sure if you guys were allowed to travel uh, outside of Hong Kong, but at the height of the pandemic, during the peak, how did you transition? Because I know you love to draw. You bring your sketchbook everywhere you go. Yes. So how, uh, how did you transition? And did you change any of your subjects during the entire time that we were in sort of lockdown? Yes, when we were in the lockdown, I think that's last year around April, yeah. May time mm -hmm. when we all have to work from home and when um, all the restaurants have to lock down. Yeah. Um, I think I changed, I, I've been changing my subjects to, you know, drawing from my home. Okay. Drawing the views, drawing different views from different windows of my home. It's not that. You didn't mention, can you believe that I'm actually drawn all over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but actually, uh, there's quite some windows that there's no view. When you look outside, <laughs> it's only pipes. You know, yeah. it's only a wall and pipes. Um, but I tried that. Um, and also sometimes drawing a lot of food as well. Yeah. Um, well, those were the time, but uh, back then, I think I, I enjoyed it because uh, even from my balcony, I can, you know, draw the view on the right, on the left, on the middle, up and down, you know. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, I once I looked down and draw the car park. <laughs> Urban sketching, I know a lot of the people who watch at your live videos and uh, attended our, our mini workshop or our master classes have always been interested in urban sketching. So if you are to give, let's say, pieces of advice for someone who is mm. starting out and maybe in, in a, you know, confined in their homes and not able to travel, or if for someone who just want to kickstart urban sketching, but, you know, sort of scared to like draw that first line or to yeah. visualize, you know, and then try to capture the image or the subject that's in front of them. What would be your tip or tricks that you can share with them? Yeah, I think um, I will always tell people about the first day I do urban sketching, <laughs> where I hide between the cars. <laughs> okay. I will tell them that don't worry, actually, um, we, are not we are not producing we are not trying to produce a nice piece of art. We are not going to, you know, uh, uh, we, we are just having fun. Don't treat that uh, or don't pressure yourself that this must be a very nice piece of art to show to people. Just tell yourself that it's for my own uh, pleasure. It's like how I, I do all my sketchbooks. These are my own journals. I, I just keep them to keep myself happy, seeing all the journals, different pages, flipping the pages to remember what I did on that day. So don't worry about not doing it good. And just start and just, just keep drawing. Um, I, I don't do really nice sketch every time. 
And every time I, I put on the lines, I would think, oh no, I, I did that wrong. Oh no, uh, uh, the perspective is not right. Yeah. But just tell, I, I keep on telling myself that, don't think about that, don't think about that. It would be nice, it would be nice. Just keep drawing, just, just enjoy the process. So I think um, uh, you need to think about it that is the process you enjoyed and then the, the finished product will be will be your journal will be something that will keep you remember think about that instead of think about i'm drawing i'm doing an art piece no it's not <laughs> it's different <laughs> it's a record of the place it's a record of the moment and it's something that you should enjoy so start off with that and i think eventually once you get the first sketchbook done you, you will feel the um you feel a lot of satisfaction and that's the key thing i think very well said i i like specifically when you said you are not trying to create some level of a more a masterpiece but you are recording moments and capturing it through your journals, through your sketchbook. Thanks so much for being on Make More Art, the podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time to join me on this interview. I know you have your day job and, you know, thank you for sparing the time to talk with me and share more about Hong Kong. I specifically love when you talk about those three places because you can literally sense from an urban sketcher perspective how you view things, that it's really not about a beautiful place, but it's more of the experience when you're looking at a subject and connecting with the people who are in that area. I know that you will be teaching with us and it's sometime in February. Yes, so, yes. Okay. We are looking forward to that. If you are listening to this podcast, if you're watching this from YouTube, please do look forward to that. What you've heard on the show is just a glimpse of what Vanessa can share about urban sketching. So please do watch out for that and do follow her. Your Instagram again is? Uh, it's Fan Sketcher. A-N-S-K-E-T-C-H-E-R. -E. So you, yeah, you will see all her vibrant paintings there, sketches, and it feels like traveling within Hong Kong, even though you are in your home country or wherever <laughs> you may be. So thank you again, Vanessa. Please stay safe, and I look forward to speaking with you yeah, again. Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Take care of yourself. Bye. You too. Okay, thank you. Vanessa brought me back to those days of walking around the streets of Hong Kong. But most importantly, hearing her talk about sketching and how it allowed her to rediscover her home country made me think about pulling my sketchbook and taking the time to stop and draw. How about you? Have you tried pausing for a while to sketch? Do let us know by sharing your comments through the blog post associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Vanessa. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please drop us a five-star review on the Apple Podcast where you can find us on YouTube at Etro Studio. And, oh, hitting the subscribe button is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next time. Until then, let's make more art.